So what a game that was. What a game that was in the Throne Senior Football Championship. Dramore getting the victory in the end over Trillick. They win by a scoreline of 17 points to 2-9. A two-point victory for Dramore over their local rivals. And they march on to the Tyrone Senior Football Championship final for the first time since 2012. The last time they won the competition as well was back in 2012. So a huge victory for Dramore over their local, rival, over their local rivals. I'm nearly losing my words. Trillick, I suppose, came into this game as one of the favourites, no doubt about it. They've been not one of the most dominant sides in Tyrone over the past couple of years because, as we very well know, like the Tyrone Senior Football Championship almost seems to have a, a different winner every year. But Trillick were in the final last year. They were beaten on penalties and they won the competition the year previously. So certainly they were coming in as one of the favourites with players like Matty Donnelly in there, Richie Donnelly as well, Lee Brennan, you know, what a tremendous talent he is and one of the best players in this game, no doubt about it. And certainly I'd love to see him play more for Tyrone. Tyrone. I don't know why he doesn't get as much time for Tyrone. I mean, I understand they won the All-Ireland, so I'm sure they're not going to make too many changes to, the, to their team next year. But he's certainly a player that would um, would definitely deserve some sort of a call-up by Fergal Logan and Brian Dewher at some point. Um, and it was an interesting game. Like, Dramore, they came flying out of the traps. They hit seven points without reply. You were kind of wondering, like, what is going on with Trillick here? They weren't in the game whatsoever. They didn't settle into the game. They were struggling with their own kickouts. Like, every kickout was going to a Dramore man, and it just seemed to be... The ball was just going in the exact same place every time. And you were kind of wondering, like, Trillick just need to maybe play a ball short, keep a bit of possession, work their way into the game. Because they were really struggling. They weren't even getting beyond their own 45 uh, in the first quarter. Uh, it wasn't like they were creating chances and hitting opportunities wide. Their first wide actually only came very late on when one of the Garrity brothers uh, hit a, an opportunity wide. That was their and that was a goal chance. That was their first wide in the game, so like they were struggling to create opportunities. But when they did create opportunities, more often than not, they actually scored. So they didn't hit their first point until the end of the the first quarter, if you're or the first kind of half of the first half, if that makes sense. Right before the water break, Lee Brennan with a, a point from uh, from a free. And to be fair to Trillick, like straight after the water break, they were more direct. They were brilliant on the ball as well. Simon Garrity obviously gets that goal running down the left hand side and. And a lovely finish on his right boot into the back of the net. And uh, Dromore from then on in really struggled. They only hit two points uh, between then and you know the end of the first half. And they actually they really struggled as well to get into the game. I think I, I seen something like Trillick outscored Dromore by like two five to two points going into the final quarter. Dromore were really, really struggling. And given the fact that they started the game so well, I think once Trillick really came into it, you could tell that Dromore just had no real answer as to what Trillick were trying to do. They certainly pressed higher up uh, on Dramore's kickouts and they were turning the ball over. They were being more smarter with possession and they were just being brilliant in front of goal. Like James Gar Garrity in particular, um, I can understand why Emmett McNabb won man of the match in the end, but he would have been my man of the match up until that kind of final five to ten minute period because he hit some wonderful scores in the first half, um, you know, going down the home stretch in the first half to really turn the tide for Trillick. Uh, another brilliant point in the second half as well. Obviously a mistake from the Dramore goalkeeper led to a very comfortable goal for Lee Brennan. You know, all he had to do was hit it off the ground and it went into the back of the net. And uh, Dramore probably just lost their heads a little bit. But to be fair to them, they done extremely well to stay in the game. And, you know, what spirit, what fight to turn that game around. Like, they were down five points going into the final quarter. They looked dead and beaten. They looked dead and buried. You didn't think they had a way back. And somehow they did. They found a way back. And Emmett McNabb, I don't know if he's the Lizard one. or does, I think is Ronan the Lizard one? I, I don't know. There's some mad uh, nicknames on show. It kind of got me thinking as well. Like, um, you know, what kind of nicknames would you give... A lot of uh, Gaelic football players, you know, just, just out of interest, you know. But, you know, it kind of reminded me a bit, and I don't know if many people watch, like, UFC or, or wrestling, but, you know, if you think of mixed martial arts, a lot of fighters have nicknames and, and stuff like that. It just got me thinking it would kind of be crazy to have something like that in the GEA. But, anyway, back to the game. Emmett McNabb was absolutely brilliant. He hit five points in the second half in particular. Like, going down that home stretch, he hit so many wonderful scores, really, to, to turn the tide. Peter Teague in midfield was brilliant. Noel Sludden, again, you know, probably one of the best players in the country probably at the moment, like based on 2021, like you'd have to say so. Like, had an unbelievable season for Tyrone, no doubt about it. He can do the defence. Like, th it seems like this guy can play in any position across the pitch, other than goalkeeper, although if you stuck him in there, he'd probably do a job as well. Like, you can put him in defence, you can put him in midfield, attack, 
uh, wing forward, corner forward. Like he can play almost anywhere. And in midfield, he was absolutely brilliant as well. Hit a couple of points in the first half. And again, just that kind of, you know, when, when Tremor needed a bit of experience, he was the man who stepped up. He'd slow the game down. He'd wait for the right passes. And Tremor were just very efficient going down the home stretch as well. And you could tell once they started to hit a couple of points from the likes of Emmett McNabb, Oren Rafferty who came off the bench, Paul McHugh as well. They just started to really kind of, I suppose, knocked the living daylights out of Trillick in many ways. They were very rattled once again in a kind of similar fashion to what happened in the first half. Um Running through some scorers on the day, Emmett McNabb, like I said before, he hit five points, Peter Teague with four points, Noel Sludden with two points, Sean McNabb with two, Tommy McCarron, Ronan Lizard McNabb with a point, Paul McHugh and Oren Rafferty with a point as well, Lee Brennan scored one four for Trelick, Simon Garrity got a goal, James Garrity with three points, Derek Gallagher and Michael Gallagher also got on the score sheet as well and you can see these scores here are provided from GA Statsman, his Instagram account, make sure and check him out if you haven't already, he's been on the uh, podcast a number of times before, there's a lot of stats on club games and whatnot so I'd recommend anyone to go and, uh, and go and have a look at that but yeah, fair play to Dramore, like what a tremendous turnaround, they'll play the winner of either Cole Island, Cole Island or Errigal Kieran which the result of that might already be out by the time this video is uploaded um, I would expect it to be Errigal Kieran, look listen the, Can the Canavans are coming, aren't they? And, um, you know, Dara Canavan had a brilliant game last time out. Rory Canavan's looking pretty good as well. So, Errigal Kieran are looking pretty good. And that would be a very, very intriguing matchup between Dramore and Errigal Kieran. And hopefully, maybe that game is uh, streamed on RTE or TG Catter and not behind the paywall. And we can actually watch that game somewhere. But we'll have to, uh, we'll have to wait and see. And, uh, yeah, this is the match reaction anyway. Just a quick video on this game. I suppose a lot of people saying this was maybe one of the best club games advertised or, or broadcasted on RTE or maybe the best club game we've seen on TV this year. I'm not sure, but it was a cracking, cracking game of football. And I was trying to watch this. I was trying to watch the Austin Stacks East Kerry game at the same time. And, like, I'm telling you, I was focused on this game because it was a cracking, cracking game of football. It was absolutely brilliant. Fair play to Dramore. Huge win over their local rivals as well. Trelick have been the dominant force in the past couple of years. And Dramore have had to sit back and watch. But it seems like the tide has turned once again. And they march on into the final. Cole Island or uh, Ergil Kieran will await... Uh, and we'll have to wait and see what happens. It'll be a cracking game, no doubt about it. Anyway, my name is Aaron. Do leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Stay tuned. I'll be doing more match reactions and videos around club games now that we're kind of going into the deeper end of the club season. County finals are coming up. Well, soon enough, we'll have the uh, the provincial championships and the All Ireland series as well. So stay tuned for more uh, videos, podcasts. There'll be a podcast actually uploaded either to tomorrow or the next day. One of those days, anyway, with Ray Cosgrove, former Dublin footballer. Really interesting conversation. We spoke all about his time playing for Dublin. And also, he also gave some very interesting thoughts on the current Dublin team and why they were beaten last year. And it was certainly a very, uh, very fascinating conversation and probably one of the best podcasts I believe I've ever recorded. So stay tuned for that anyways. And uh, I'll see you all later. I've been part of a team that's gone on to win three in a row. It's just, it's crazy, really. And you kind of forget about it sometimes. Like all the guys that I played with growing up through the years, like we're all still friends and everything. So it really is like, a, it's a good family sense and a good community sense. We had one in All Ireland in 97, 99, 2000. It's more local at your club, you know everything, you know the setup. It's different than joining a county panel. It was nearly like a kind of statement to say, we're here, we're ready to play. No one's going to push us over this year. This podcast is sponsored by Declan Kirby GA Star. Declan Kirby GA Star is a children's GA book written by primary school teacher and GA coach Michael Egan. Follow the trials and tribulations of Declan Kirby and his team at Smith Green Gaelic Football Club. The book is a very good read for any parents who are looking to get their children involved in Gaelic games. The book is available in Eason's Little and All Good Bookshops. It's also available to download on Amazon, so make sure to go and check it out. They're very good supporters of the channel and the page, so you certainly be doing me a good favor as well if you went ahead and checked the book out so i do very much appreciate it the link is in the description down below and let's get straight into it